Let us read John chapter 9, verse 1 to 9. Then we'll read Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Church, let's read together. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither has this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Isaiah 43, 18 to 19. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Can we read this in New Living Translation? For I am... Can we start from 18? But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the wasteland. Mm. One more translation. Amplified. Verse 18. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness. Rivers in the desert. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, pay attention. Tell your neighbor, listen carefully. Tell your neighbor, I am the answer. Can you give your neighbor a high turn and say, I have the answer. Why do I think you have a wrong neighbor? Please face another neighbor and say, I am the answer. I have the answer. Now the neighbor in front of you, give that neighbor a high turn and say, I am the answer. Tell that neighbor, when you look for an answer, find me. For I am the answer. And I have the answers. If you have the answers, raise your hand and scream the loudest. Say, Amen. Please take your seats in the presence of God. We know the scripture too well. The scripture we read in the, the, the book of John. The book of John, John chapter 9. And there are a few things God just said I should do in this service. And once I am done, I am done and I'll be out of your face. The first thing God said I should do. We know the story too well. John chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible says, and Jesus passed by by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. Now he says he saw. I got interested when the Bible says he passed by. Remember when someone is passing by means that the person does not plan to stay in a place, right? The person is on transit. Do you agree with me? When you hear the word pass by, it means the person is on transit. So Jesus was just walking by and as he was walking by, I believe he had a destination in mind. But where he was at the moment was not his destination. That's why the Bible says he passed by. But he he was as he was passing by the Bible now says he saw a man which was blind from his birth Ayako Shakata Ariko Bakayada and the Lord said I should tell someone today Ariko Bo it sounds very basic but it's not basic Ariko Shayada it was while he was walking I, I will say it so that you understand me it was while he was walking that he saw Arika Tayada Batusha and when he saw he stopped Eriko Basha and God says I should tell someone one today. Arikata, what, what attracts him uh, most times is your problem. At times what attracts God most times to people is the situation you're going through. Is the challenge you're going through. Please excuse me. There were a lot of men and women that must have been on the road. It was not only the blind man, but it was the blind man he took notice of. And God said, I should tell someone in this service he has taken notice of you. No, you did not hear me. He said, I should tell you that he sees you. Oh, Yakata. He said, I should tell you that he has seen you. Arakata. He saw when you were crying in the night. He saw when they did when they said the wrong things about you. He saw the disappointment.
disappointment. He saw the failures. He saw the setback. He saw that your celebration has not yet happened. He saw how 2022 was uh, a recover. And he has seen how January up until now is. Uh, and he told me to tell you, it is just to reassure you that God does what? He sees you. No, you don't understand. Amongst the many people gathered, uh, I don't care how many people may be in the world, uh, billions and billions of people. But he said, I should tell you, he sees you. Uh, he takes notice of you. Uh, you know why I know that God sees you? If we remember the story of the woman in Luke chapter 13, can you remember the story of the woman in Luke 13? When you get to verse 12, the Bible says that Jesus entered the temple and he saw a woman that was bent over for 18 years. Excuse me, was that the only woman in the building? Why was she the one he saw? I was sure there were rich men there. I am sure there were important personalities there. But he was attracted. He was pulled. He was moved by the condition of a woman. And I know before me are men and women here. If your case is okay, if everything is okay, that's fine. But I know the people that are trusting God tonight for answers are those that have issues, are those that have challenges, are those that may have been bent over, bent over in pain, bent over in shame, bent over in disappointment. And God said, I should tell you, he sees you. You know why I am excited? He doesn't just see you. Oh, Rakata, when he saw her, he called her. He doesn't just stop at seeing. If it is man, man will stop in the place of seeing. Man can see your problem and he passes by. But when God sees a man, uh, it means that the man's time has come. Uh, when God takes notice of a man, it uh, means that his own opportune time has showed up. It uh, means that that is his kairos. It uh, means that that is his set time. Uh, up, uh, and he says, I should tell someone today, I have seen you. I will not just stop and see you. I will act. When he saw the blind man, that was when he began to act and he healed the blind man. He sees this woman bent over. He doesn't stop there. He acts. Uh, that is why I know uh, that God is about to act on your behalf. What is that challenge that came to church? What is that situation you brought to church? God said I should tell you, you must carry the answer today. Oh, because he has taken notice of you. You are carrying your answer. You are carrying your answer. Let me make you understand why I know God has seen you and has heard you. Psalms chapter 34 verse 15 says, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open to their cry. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Ask your neighbor, are you the righteous? Oh, your neighbor does not, does not, did not come to the same service with you. Find another neighbor, ask your neighbor, are you one of the righteous? Are you the righteous? What is your neighbor saying? Ask your neighbor, are you a child of God? Arakata. Oh, Yakata. For the main fact that you are here, you are the righteous. And he says, the Bible says his eyes are upon the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. There is no tear you have cried. There is no tears. The one you cried in the secret inside your room, nobody saw you God saw it. The things that happen to you that you say only you, you, it's a secret between just you. God has seen it. He heard the cries. No, you did not cry alone. That depression was not just you in the room or going through it. That anxiety was not just you. That report you received and you looked at and your heart was beating was not just you. He heard you. And when he hears, he acts. Today, I want to pray for someone. As far as, it's not for everybody, but if you came with a challenge, if you are like the blind man that has something that you are trusting God to do, or you're like the woman that was bent over, whatever has made you bend, whatever affliction, infirmity, whatever the years has done to you that has kept your posture wrongly, today, because you came for this service, because Jesus has taken notice of you, I decree it ends today. Oh, you did not hear me. On this altar of fire, carry your answers. Carry your answers. If your amen is the loudest, your answer will come quickly. You cannot leave this service still bent over. You cannot leave this service still crying the same thing. I, 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 I wish I can show you my heart. I wish I can show you my heart. The same way Jesus stood in the temple. And so that woman, it's the same way. Please, God is here. 
His presence is everywhere. That's why he's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He sees you. And it is reassuring for me because I don't care how many people are in the world. My own case is, is that dear to God. I am the apple of his eyes. I want to comfort someone and reassure someone no matter what it is you go through. Never forget, God sees me. God notices me. God knows my name. He, he, he has seen my tears. These tears are not in vain. What they have done to me, it did not happen behind him. He saw it. And the God that sees and takes notice is the same God that changes stories. Today, everybody that needs a change of story, I pray for you, let the Lord change your story. Let the Lord change your story. Let the Lord change your story. God said I should tell some people in this service, some of you, he took notice of you. Why you have not carried your answer yet is simple. Did you see what happened when he saw the woman? He saw that woman bent over. Why didn't he stay from a distance and tell her, you are healed, go. He said, come. Some of us, our answer is in the come. He is saying, the answer you are looking for, I need you to come. When you come, come is fellowship. Come is closeness. Because you can be down there and you are far. God is saying, I don't want a distance thing with you. I don't want to do the one I'll finish doing for you and you leave me. I want the one when I do, you will still be there. So I want fellowship. I want to build structure. I want you to be in that place whereby my, when you carry your answer, you will not walk away from me. I shock at her. So why you have not received your answer yet is because I am saying, come. Can someone come today? God is saying, come. All I just need you to do is come. Once you come, once you see my presence as a place, not just for gifts. Once you begin to rely more on the giver and not the gift, things will change. Once I see in your heart, that is not about what I am doing for you. you, you our relationship is beyond gifts. For some of us, our relationship is just what we can collect from God. And when he finishes that, we move till the next time we have another problem. We show up again. Oh God, God, God. We fast, fast, fast. Can't you just fast because you want to, because you want intimacy? Must your fast, fast be tied to something? God, I want car. I want money. Lord, I want this. Must your prayers always be about things? Can my prayer can my fast, can my walk with God just be because he is God and I just want more. And he says to the woman, I see you bent over. I'm not going to do this miracle from a distance because I can do it. Come. And she begins to walk. Even with her bent situation, she is still coming. He sees, because when he stays calm, he still sees you crying as you are coming. He still sees them slapping you. He still sees the pain. He sees the financial struggle. He sees the food you have not eaten. He sees the clothes you don't have. He sees the money you don't have to pay your school fees. He sees all of it, but he's still saying, come, be coming. As long as I am looking at you, you won't fall keep coming. And as long as your gaze is on me, you won't fall. Keep coming. Calabar, can someone just raise his hand and pray in the Holy Ghost? I don't know what you want to tell God, but just pray in the Holy Ghost. My answer is in my fellowship with God. When I have done all I know how to do, and I don't know what else to do, it's intimacy. Church, listen to me. Listen to me. There were times in our relationship, me and Papa, years early in our marriage, there were times we would trust God for something and it will not happen. And my heart will pain me and I'll be so upset. And I'm like, God, why, why, why? And for every time things like that happen, I saw Papa do something different. He looked as if he didn't feel what I was feeling. He looked as if he now stayed following God even more. And I asked him one day, I said, why is it when these things happen, you don't even act? He says, for every time, I know God so much and I know he loves me. For every time he doesn't give me what I ask, I tell myself, maybe I need to fellowship more. 
maybe I need to build more intimacy. I will love up more on God. I will serve him more. That, that is, and that was always what he did for every time. That is a place of maturity. When things don't work, we don't turn our back and say it did not work and cry and leave the presence of God. We say, no, devil, mm -mm, you came late. This thing didn't happen. I will do more. I used to pray 30 minutes, I will increase to one hour. I used to fast only once, I will fast two times. I used to serve, or I was not serving in church, I will serve more. You, your commitment and dedication, loyalty to God increases for every time you are denied an answer. I'm using the word denied. Because that is how even God gauges your come. That's how he knows if they come, if the attraction is for what you will get. Or if my, your attraction to him is for who he is. It's the question you must answer one day. Why am I following God? Why? Is it for what he will give me? Or is it just, even if God, you don't do this thing for me in this life, I will always follow you. That is another place altogether. And every one of us will rise up to that place. I'm not saying you won't carry your answer, but I'm saying there is a mindset that provokes answer. This one is one of it. And the scripture continues. And it says, in that scripture we were reading, please take me back to verse 1. And it says, and Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his bed. Jesus passed by. And he saw a man which was blind from his bed. Verse 2. Verse 2, the Bible says, and his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Master, who did sin? The disciples asked, hey, Yakina Makuba, this one that excited me. God said I should tell someone, let me not run too fast. Let me try and be calm. Now, if you read with me verse 1, remember I told you earlier that he passed, he was passing by. As he passed by, the disciples asked a question. Jesus saw, the Bible did not say that when Jesus saw, he stopped. The Bible just said Jesus saw a blind man. That, uh, his, Jesus saw a man who was blind from his bed. So I apparently, I believe Jesus must have still been walking as he saw the man blind. And the Bible now says, they now asked Jesus a question concerning this man. A discussion began concerning the man. And that was what made Jesus to pause and begin to give them answer. And when he answered, because he had given an answer, the next thing to do is to do what? Is to act. You cannot finish answering that kind of question and you won't do anything. After he finished saying that nobody, no, neither this man nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Ayakata. God said I should tell someone. There are discussions going on now. Arikata. You know, no, 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 hear me well. There are people that are talking about your matter now. Do you know that that is one of the things that will provoke an answer from God? Because they are talking about you. Oh, when they talk about you, don't complain. Don't complain. It is going up to heaven now. And it is coming back as an answer. Oh, Shaka Bakata. Arikopoto. He heard. It was what he heard them say that made him stop and say, hey, this man's case is not like this. So when they begin to talk about you, she does not have her babies. She is not married. All this church they are going to, what is coming out of church? Wednesday they are in church. Sunday they are in church. All the day throughout the week they are in church. And they are talking. Let your mockers be talking, you know, because they, all the things they are saying are going up to heaven now. Ayakata. And it is coming back as an answer. Oh, you don't understand. The Bible says that when they spoke, the Bible said Jesus answered. Jesus answered. When your mockers talk, Jesus will answer. When your scorners talk, Jesus will give a response. You don't understand. When your haters gather and they are talking, the Lord will respond on your behalf. The problem is that you have been answering by yourself. God says, allow me to do the answering. I know how to answer. Psalms chapter 2 and Rikopo from verse 1. That is one way God answers. Let me show you how God answers. Why do the heathens range uh, and the people imagine a vain thing? Uh, the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his nation. They anointed. See, see, see. When they gather and talk about you, the truth is that because you are the righteous, because you are the child of God, they are not talking about you. It's God they are talking about. How can man talk about God and God will keep quiet? Verse 3 says, Yakatupata, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cause from us. And I like this one. He that seated in heaven shall laugh. Hey, hey, hey. The 
Lord is laughing at your excuses. Uh, he's laughing at the plotters. Uh, I don't know who you are, but God told me to tell you. You see, in this service of answer, he is the one that is going to answer. The answer you are looking for is in the answer of God. Uh, God will answer on your behalf. God will answer for you. You will not explain it again. Stop explaining your situation. God will answer. Yakata. The Bible says the Lord shall have them in derision. And verse 5. This is his answer. Verse 5. Media verse 5. Then shall he speak. There are different ways God speaks. For some of you tonight, God is going to speak with fire. You did not hear me. Some of you, God is speaking with thunder. Elijah, when they got to the mount, he said, let the God that answers by fire be God. Ashakata. For some of us, our matters need fire answer. Some of us, it is thunder. For some of us, it is the outstretched arm of God that will answer on our behalf. For some of us, it is the mighty rushing wind, uh, the east wind of the law. However God decides to answer, he will give your accusers an answer. He will give your mockers an answer. The truth is that whether you know people talking about you or not, some of them are talking about you with good heart. They are just feeling for your situation and things that have not happened in your life. It's still okay. It is still going up to God and God is still coming with an answer. Whether it is for good or for bad, it is coming back with an answer. No wonder Hannah will say, Ayakata in first Samuel chapter 2 and Hannah will go ahead and say, Arukopo Shakata, if media will help me. Arikopo, first Samuel chapter 2 verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoiced in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over my enemies. Can we see this verse 1 in NLT translation? Ayakatayada Asukatayada verse 1 in NLT. My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have an answer for my enemies. The answer God is giving somebody today, 50 of you in this service, Ashakata, he will close the mouth of your enemies. The Lord is giving you an answer for your enemies. The Lord is giving you an answer for your haters. Your, the Lord is giving you an answer for those that live around you. People that know your story in your neighborhood, God is going to give an answer today. God is giving an answer. God is giving an answer. 50 of you receiving with the loudest amen. Can I pray for someone in 24 hours? Receive an answer of peace. Receive an answer of restoration. Receive an answer of rest. Receive your answer of favor. Receive your answer that produces answers. Receive the answer, Yakata, Arukovo of the new Rekepesha. Wherever you need an answer, today we decree uh, let the Lord send the answer let the Lord give you an answer let the Lord give you an answer if your amen thunders loud let your own start now look at your neighbor say I have an answer for my enemies oh shakata find another neighbor say the Lord will answer my enemies the Lord will answer my mockers the Lord will answer those that are around me I will not need to tell the story the Lord will answer if you believe the Lord will answer give the Lord a shout 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 raise your hands and say oh Lord the Lord that answers by fire answer by fire answer by Thunder. Answer. 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 I don't know who you are, but I just heard God say, your family members are the one laughing at you. I don't know who is in your family laughing at you, but God says tonight, uh, in less than 24 hours, uh, Yakata, he will give the person laughing at you an answer. Hey, Yakata. The same way he shut the mouth of Penina. The same way Anna carried an answer and Penina became quiet. That is the same way all those that have been telling your story, gossip, talking about you behind you, talking about you where you don't see, come to you and they sound like they are, they are praying with you, not knowing that they are mocking you in secret. Uh, uh, yakata, even the genuine ones, uh, as long as people have talked about your matter. The same way God gave an answer and silenced Penina forever. I don't know who you are, but you see that your family member. God is giving an answer that will silence them. Any unmarried girl in this place, God says I should pray for you. 
in two months time shaka battle i don't know how god is going to do it but if you are ready to get married and you have faced an obstacle in the area of marriage in two months in two months today i release uh, from this altar of fire i connect to the grace on the life of papa i decree in two months uh, you are entering your husband's house you are entering your husband's house you will be maritally settled uh. i decree the siege is broken the siege is broken the siege is broken the siege is broken every generational cause i break it by fire I break it by fire. Every line they said you will not cross. Today I decree cross by fire. Cross by mercy. Cross by grace. Let the amen of God's people thunder. God says I should pray for people that are struggling with anything that seems difficult, hard. Today I pray for you. If you are here, kneel down wherever you are. If there's something hard, Ayakata, God is about to answer. There is grace in the house. Anybody struggling with anything difficult, you have struggled for years, for months. Today by the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And because we are declaring God that answers, Ayakopa, I decree, let that stubborn challenge, let that difficult situation, let it break by fire. Let it break by fire. Let the Lord give you an answer. Let it break with the answer of God. Let it break with the answer of God. Your amen does not sound like you know you are the one. Rise up on your feet. Ayakata. And the Bible goes ahead to say in verse 2 and 3. And his disciples asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, neither has this man sin nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Ayakatoada. Let me seem to, let me act like I'm a doctor. I am not a doctor, but I'm going to try. Ashakata. So, these people, they see a, a problem, a, a problem that presented itself, and they are trying to do what? Diagnose the issue. And they come up with the problem, the symptom, or what they can see is blindness. And you will agree with me that every time you have a headache, uh, the headache can, can be caused by too many different things. Who agrees? Uh, stomach ache can be caused by too, too many different things. Most times when we have headache, we may say it is malaria. But you can meet a doctor, they say it's not malaria, it's stress. It's stress related. Or they can call it one other thing or one other thing. So now they see blindness and they want to diagnose blindness. And they say to Jesus, Jesus, this blindness, is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? They were about to misdiagnose the problem. They were about to misdiagnose what they saw. They presenting doctors here, please help me. They were trying to misdiagnose. But Jesus intervened. Jesus said, eh, 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 eh. if you keep going on this way, because at the time it was normal or known, if something like this should happen by law, you would just term it as a sin. Maybe they committed a sin. That's why this thing has happened the way it has happened. So it was easy to go in that direction. But Jesus said, no, no, no. If I leave you, you will be misdiagnosing. And if they say misdiagnosis, then that means you will not treat this patient well. Because you will give them the drug that is not the right drug and that means they will think they met in paracetamol and they will not get the relief they are supposed to get i think they will not be the blindness will not go so you before you can cure this blindness you must know the cause that is what doctors do they try to find out the cause so they do different things they do different tests so that they can eliminate other things surrounding to get the main the main thing hallelujah as shakata and god said in this service i should tell somebody that your answer is just like that arukopo arikete the first step the first step for some of you you are still in that point whereby you need to diagnose properly you have not diagnosed the problem yet so you are hitting and misfiring arikata the first thing God will do for you in this service is that anybody that is praying the wrong prayer, Arakata, you are praying the wrong prayer, Arikata, addressing the wrong matter. Today I decree, receive direction. Oh, you did not hear me. This is very critical if you are going to carry an answer. Receive direction. Receive discernment. Oh, as loud as your amen will thunder tonight. Uh, receive discernment. Receive discernment. Receive discernment. The second set of people is that they know the problem, but they are drinking the wrong medicine. They know the prayer. They know this is the problem. They have. They've never to say this is blindness, but you know that. You know that even when we are treating malaria, when we treat malaria, we can treat malaria from different angles, and we still treat malaria. Somebody, a doctor, can tell somebody to drink uh, take ima injection. After taking ima injection, they give you a matem drug. Am I getting into here? Another person, 
they can tell the person, you won't take injection. Go and take P-Alaxin. And you drink P-Alaxin. At the end of the day, the two of them still get their healing. Uh, do you, do, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay. Now, some other person may have taken P-Alaxin. But what the person needed should have been the injection first. And be, after the injection, because probably the malaria has progressed. It's now uh, 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 severe. Uh, it's two plus, three plus. Uh, a two plus malaria, you will not treat it the way a one plus is, right? Am I right? So, what am I trying to say? For some of us, we know the problem, but we are hitting the wrong nail on the head. Ayakata, what God is saying, Alibroko Shakata, God is saying, Alibraka, Arikata, that's your treatment, that's your answer. You just need to know what to do. What to do? Because you are doing the wrong thing. Ayakata, how this man is blind and he's healing, God says, Jesus normally would just pray for a blind man. After all, blind Bartimaeus, wasn't he blind when he was crying out for mercy? What did Jesus do? Receive your sight and he received his sight. So, but why is this man's own case different? He now says, he spits on the ground. He makes pot -pot mud and he picks it and pastes on his eye and says, go and, and go say that I should tell, and go and wash. Go say I should tell somebody. You just need to know exactly what to do. Some of you have been praying and fasting, but your answer is not in the praying and fasting. Your answer may just be in forgiving someone. Your answer may just be in living in forgiveness, living with a clean heart. That may just be the answer, the thing that you need to do in order for your answer to break open, bust out. Some of us, it could be that God is just saying, maybe it's service. Maybe this, this a, you know, the, the Bible talk about all manners of prayer. If, if only God can open our eyes so that you know exactly what you do. Because when you are doing the ones you are not, you are wasting time. Time is going. Can I speak to someone? Time is not your friend. Time is going. We cannot be them mismanaging or misfiring. When if we just want one, one word from God, we know exactly where to hit. Today, anybody that is misfiring, you are there addressing things that you should not address. When the answer is so close, have you heard when they say somebody's husband is so close? You see the person every day, and yet you are still looking at Kapanchan, waiting to see a man to marry, when the man is even sitting beside you. It happens. It happens. The person is so close. The helper you're looking for is so close, and you're there looking. Looking, oh God, send me my helper. Let him come from the east. Let him come from the north. Let him come from the west. But he's sitting beside you in church. Which east again is he supposed to come from? He has come, is that he has come. Father, any of us that is misfiring, Doing the things we shouldn't be doing because we don't know what we are supposed to do tonight because it is a service of answer i go back to the issue of direction father i pray oh god let your people receive direction tonight in the dream of the night 20 of you may god open your eyes uh, may god open your ears uh, oh while you walk on the street may god show you uh, may you hear clearly what you need to do uh, the bible says we shall be taught of the lord uh, we will hear a voice from behind uh, today i pray for you may you hear that voice from behind may you hear that voice from behind may you hear that voice from behind let your amen turn now uh, i open up your spiritual gateways uh, every cup we're blocking your, your hearing, your seeing. Uh, Arakata, your spiritual gateways. Uh, I command, let them be torn by fire. Torn by fire. Torn by fire. As your amen will turn that, receive your answer. Receive your answer. Your answer will not be denied. Your answer will not be delayed. Your answer will not be delayed. You do not hear me. Anybody that has experienced delay in their answers, uh, we break the backbone today. We break the backbone today. Carry instant answers. Carry quick answers. Uh, carry speedy answers. Let your amen make it a reality. Can I just say one more thing and I'm done? One more thing. Too many things to say but just one more thing. Please on this journey, the Bible says and Jesus said, and his disciples, verse 2, asked him saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus tells them the answer that we talked about. He goes to verse 4 and 5 and says, I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can walk. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I want to speak to somebody. God said I should tell you. I have been talking about receiving answers. But he says, there's a need to become an answer. The journey of becoming an answer 
is a journey of learning. You must get to a season whereby you allow yourself to learn, to understand, to know. These people, they met Jesus and they asked the question. In our work with God, we must always ask the questions. He will give us the answer. They asked Jesus. Remember, Jesus was known as Rabbi. Rabbi is my teacher. My teacher. This man, this is what we think. And when you call him my teacher, he tells you, no, no, no. When you are going, when you are erring, he will correct you and say, no, this one, you are moving in error. No, you, remember these disciples. At this time, they were following Jesus. But after Jesus left, they were the answers. They became the answers. Jesus says, greater works shall you do. And they started doing greater works. They were doing a lot of things. At this time, they were not doing it on their own. But when Jesus left, they said, why? Because they went with the master. They followed their teacher. They asked the questions. They got the answers. And he made them better people. They knew better. So that's why when they saw a blind man in the future as apostles, they were able to heal. They were able to do it. Why? Because they followed. They followed the master. I want to be an answer. To be an answer, I must know how to follow. I'm a disciple. I am, I am in the school of discipleship. We don't outgrow it. The school of the Holy Spirit, you don't outgrow it. You must follow closely. Because the truth is that when you think you know, you'll be surprised that you don't know. Because if you're going to deal, it's the same thing with doctors. This person has appendix. He's presenting as appendix. Does not mean it's the same way you treat everything. There may be other factors surrounding. So we must always follow closely. Ask the questions. I want to be an answer. I am an answer. As God uses you, always remember, he's the one using you. You are not using yourself. It's not your power. It's not your ability. Neither is it your wisdom. But it is through following that I become the answer to my generation. Rise up on your feet. Just wave your hands to this great God. Can you just pray in the Holy Ghost for the next 30 seconds? Lekumbre kike tike tu pratatada. Brood of ours, breathe upon us, breath of God. Please take this moment very seriously. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. If you can't pray in the Holy Ghost, call Jesus fire. Breathe upon us, brood over us, change us from the inside to the out. Let another man emerge. Let us become more like you. Teach us, oh God. Show us, oh God. Reveal unto us, oh God. Let our walk with you be a walk in the spirit, with the spirit, a journey in the spirit. Thank you, Lord, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Father, continue with us. Let no one live here the same way. We have the answer. We have become the answer. In Jesus' mighty name.